All right, greetings, my friends. Hope you are well. Uh, appreciate you just hanging on for me for a second. A couple minutes late. Anyway, if you can see me, hear me, see the screen, it says Friday Fire Super Class. Raise your hand. It lets me know that we are live and well. Dennis, good to see you. Dennis says, yes, let's go. Dennis is ready to go today. So, uh, Fidel, good to see you. Candice, Bobby. Brian, good to see you. Joe, Gene, Jeff, good to see you, Jeff. Uh, Masood, Mike, Michelle. Okay, without further ado, Sylvester. I love the name Sylvester. Good to see you on here, my friend. All right, so we got Long Island. Gene is in Long Island. Shoot me a couple places that you're from real quick, too, and then we'll get right into it. Starting with a couple pieces of Solomon's Wisdom. I am super pumped to share uh, what I was studying this morning, and I think it's got a ton of implication for your business and for your lifestyle, and uh, let me prove that, so just give me a while to do it. But All right, so we got Long Island, we got Phoenix, Arizona, we got Mississippi. Let's hear from a couple other people real quick, and then... It's, so in the question, there's a little box there called questions, that's where I interact a little bit with you guys. So if you hit it in there, we got California, we got Anaheim, we got Panama. I like it. So without further ado, let's go. Let's go. Hang on. Let me do this. Get some situated. Just one second. Getting this puppy ready to roll. Pull that over. Pull this over. And here's the deal. Here's the deal. Thank you. Thank you. Just one more. All right. So we're starting with Solomon. And this is a really interesting ancient nugget of wisdom. And I love, I love uh, doing some feedback and conversation back and forth with you guys. So feel free to uh, fire questions and stuff as we go. But... So here's a short story. This is in Proverbs 22, 13, King Solomon. He says, the sluggard says, so the sluggard is usually along the same lines uh, as a sloth. So sloths move really slow. Sluggards also move, but they're kind of like they're dull. So the idea of a sluggard, a sloth, lazy, unambitious, that's kind of the thing. So it's not like they don't do anything They because you're going to see. But it starts off, and the sluggard here has a confession. There's a confession. And he says, there's a lion outside. I shall be killed in the streets. All right? So here's what the sluggard says. The sluggard says, there's a lion outside. I shall be killed in the streets. And the gist of Proverbs was primarily written to Israelite children to become leaders of the world so that they were to be the head of all nations not the tail they were to the be they were going to be the ones that lent the money not borrowed the money so they were to be really the rulers and the leaders of the future earth and of that kingdom so it was really an instruction guide for them to be leaders in a lot of ways and so the idea of a sluggard looking out at the marketplace and saying, there's a lion outside. I'm going to be killed in the streets. Um, here's, here's some of the takeaways. Number one is to beware your inner and your outer confession. Okay, I'll get to that in a sec. Also, you're going to see a lot about fear is used in here. Because this is pretty much a, this is the Middle East environment that we're in kind of Israelite and stuff so it's very desert and there are lions but lions very rarely would go to the street okay barely ever do you see lions in the street attacking people that's a very strange example even still to this day uh, most tigers and most lions stay outside of the city limits and they don't really bother people and this has been this has been the case for a long time but the idea of the sluggard saying that there's a lion outside and he's going to be killed in the streets, what he's doing is fear 
automatically what fear does is it is misused imaginations. And so what happens is we end up, when we confess something inside, okay, so you want to be aware of your internal confession. And I'll get to this, how this relates to internet marketing in particular in just a second. But what fear does is it triggers illusions and delusions, okay? So the sluggard says, there's a lion outside, I'll be killed in the street. Now, the internet marketing sluggard, so we'll go the internet marketing sluggard, says, my friends are going to tease me when they see me on social media. Oh my gosh, I'm going to be the uh, bane of existence. Oh my gosh, I'm going to lose thousands of dollars online um, and I'm going to go bankrupt. The sluggard says, oh my gosh, Facebook is so hard and I'm going to get banned. And then if I get banned, the world's going to melt and oh my gosh. And then my spouse is going to see I'm a failure. And oh my gosh, my kids aren't going to get what they, what they always wanted in life. And the internet mark. Now raise your hand if I'm making a little bit of sense here. The internet marketer says the internet marketing sluggard has, we have our own rendition of this. Okay. So you can feel free to come up with some other ones that we have. But the, the internet marketing sluggard, so we'll just do a few more of these because they're kind of fun. The internet marketing sluggard says, if I email my list, wait for it, uh, if I email my list, where, sorry, um, I'm having, okay, there we go. So the email marketing or the uh, internet marketing Sluggard says, uh, internet marketing is too hard, it's too saturated, there are, there's too much competition, too much competition, I'll be killed in the streets, I'm too old, I'll get killed in the marketplace, I'm not good enough with computers. The internet will devour me. If I buy and strangers buy my stuff, how do I know they're not going to come to my house and ransack all of my goods and steal my car? Okay, here's what I'm saying. The sluggard says all sorts of illusionary and delusionary misuse of his imagination all to help him stay in the state of what Stephen Pressfield calls resistance procrastination, stopping. Okay, I got to turn off my messages real quick. Sorry about this. Give me one second. Um, let me get to these. Let me turn these puppies off. And I'm good. All right, so raise your hand if you're getting what I'm saying on this. The internet marketer says a lot of these kind of things, okay? And we, <laughs> dope concept, yeah, contemporized, exactly. That's what I'm after here, Gene. I really want to make uh, Solomon's stuff for me, if you don't know my backstory. Solomon's stuff took me from living in a mobile home, qualifying for welfare for the first five years of our marriage, to then going on and producing over $20 million. And, and how I did it was I would visualize these proverbs manifesting in my life completely perfectly manifested. So the sluggard says there's a lion outside, I'll be killed in the streets. Um, how do we flip this proverb? How do we flip this? So, because what would we want manifested? We don't want this verse necessarily manifested. How could we twist it? So let's just, let's just remake the verse, okay? So the ambitious says there is a lion outside or there is opportunity galore with an exclamation point. I shall be killed in the streets. I shall own the streets. Okay. I shall have influence on these streets. My products and services will thrive inside these streets. 
Okay, raise your hand if you see what we just did there. What we did was we flipped a very negative, which is a good proverb. I'm not saying negative like it's bad, but this is in a negative modality. It's in a negative teaching sense. The sluggard says there's a lion outside. I'm going to be killed in the streets. Those are both based on fear. They're delusional. Whereas the ambitious person says there's opportunity galore. There's so much opportunity that it, like all they see wealth, precious wealth in the land. So there's that other proverb that says the lazy man looks at looks at the land and says there's no roast to game or there's no roast. There's no game to roast, which means there's no food. We're going to starve. There's never mind no jobs. There's no food, the lazy man says. But the wise man says there is precious wealth in this land. Looks at the identical land and says, I see wealth to be had here. I see wealth and value to be integrated into this land. I see ways to uh, rise up and lift up and, and optimize the environment here and become wealthy for myself and to provide beneficial products to others that bless them. And so there's this synergistic winning. But the, ambitions, the ambitious says there's opportunity galore. I shall own the streets or I shall put a great house on the streets. I'll have influence on the streets. My products and services will thrive inside these streets. And that is one thing that I studied today a little bit. So just wrapping up this, this one real quick. If you want to raise your hand and just say, uh, if you want to raise your hand and share for about one minute what you got out of this little unpacking of this first little ancient code, um, I'd love to hear it. I know I usually I don't have people come out and ask what they, what they learned right away on this. But if you want, you can raise your hand and I'll, I'll listen to you or we'll all listen to you. Or, or you can type something that you mainly took in the comments. But the main thing I want you to take away from in here is that we have an internal confession that's circulating in our mind all the time. Okay, it's a diagolos. It's going back and forth in our mind all the time. My phone's all sorts of blowing up. Hang on here. Um, beautiful, beautiful. So here's a short story. Inside our minds, we have this... We have this kind of uh, conversation going on. The sluggards is one that's based on fear that goes downhill. Here it's an illusionary thing. There's not a lion outside. And ultimately, this guy sees himself dying. Okay, so this is a downward, very not very positive view. The Solomon way to live and the biblical way to live would be to flip this and say something like the ambitious says, in your private secret heart, today is the one August 11th, 2017 I ever get. And there's opportunity in this day. There is precious opportunity for relationships, intimacy, profit, ideas. I'm on the edge of a great idea. I'm on the edge of a breakthrough. I'm one sail away from making it, you know, I'm one... I'm one notch away from getting into that breakthrough zone and always believing. I've been doing this shit for a decade. And I always believe I'm just on the edge of learning something big. And to this day, a decade down into this pattern, I am still believing and I feel the same way I felt when I started breaking through, that I am this close to a breakthrough. And I still don't think I've had my breakthrough yet. But I think I'm this close to it. And that's an attitude of epiphany to carry. So with that, um, appreciate, okay, a lot of, wow, a lot of people commented on here. So um, here's a couple comments inside. No line will keep me from opportuni opportunistic eyes. I'm going to stay on the positive path. Thanks for the guidance. Uh, love you, Mark. Uh, remind me that there's fruit where others see lack. Needed that today. Thank you. Uh, Lions stands for fear. Uh, reverse my fears. The fears are not real. They are keeping me from my next level. And really, who's to say, and this is a great, Dennis, that's very good, because who's to say, and with the, with the power of placebo and the power that our words have creationally, see, when the sluggard says there's a lion in the outside, I'll be killed in the streets, 
he's more likely to spot a lion and be killed in the streets. I can't prove that, but we all know for some reason it's kind of true. Raise your hand if you get what I'm saying. He will be more likely to spot the lion somehow, and he will be more likely to get consumed in the streets by a lion. It's super rare, but he will be more likely to do it because he's confessing it. He's speaking it out into the world, and who knows. But um, this is just a super powerful uh, phrase, and I'm glad I got to share it. So let's move on to the second one, and uh, we'll get rocking. So this is really uh, good to set. This is the distinction between somebody who earns five to $50,000 a year online or thereabouts, you know, or nothing, but, but usually in the five to 50,000, okay, you're kind of, you're kind of making money. It's kind of happening for you here and there. It's kind of doing this and that, but it's not popping. This is how you really get to popping. This is how you get to a place where you're in, in some kind of status that you could, you could very closely tie to abundance. So here's how it goes. It says that the plans of the diligent lead surely to abundance. So there's this idea that abundance, so this this will be a terrible picture, I'm sure. This is that cornucopia. So I'm trying to draw a cornucopia. Give me a break here. That's an apple. That's a that's a chicken leg. I don't know, but just imagine this, this cornucopia, that's a melon. No, I don't know what it is, but just it's abundance of wealth. It's abundance of laughter. It's abundance of relationship. It's abundance of everything you want abundant. Okay. So the plans of the diligent surely lead to abundance, but to everyone who is hasty comes only to poverty. So we have this idea that plans plus massive action equal abundance. Okay, this is verse set A, and this is verse set B. Verse set B summarized is that sporadic decisions and disjointed moves lead to poverty. So let's take a look into this because this is the big difference. If you want to go to consistent 100K plus, consistent 100K plus, and I, I mean this, it, it's, I'm not pitching anything today, so I can tell you this. If you're in an online program and you have an affiliate product or your own product and it's worth its salt and it's got some gain and you have, you can get to 100K a year. It's not tens of thousands of people, tens of thousands do it. Okay. In the old days, that was a big deal. Nowadays, tens of thousands of people do that. So let's break this down so you can see the difference. Okay, let's just start off with verse set B down here. But everyone who is hasty comes only to poverty. So here's what hasty is, and this is really key. Hasty does not mean lazy, okay? Hasty means fast moving, okay? This is weird. So watch this. F hazy Hasty means fast moving, but doesn't that, isn't that what diligence is as well? Fast moving? It kind of is. So diligence and hastiness both carry this seed that look almost identical, which is fast, speed, decisions. Okay. Here's the difference though. The plans of the diligent lead surely to abundance. So when Jesus was talking about, um, there was a tower that was left undone. It wasn't completed. And he said, you've got to count the cost. You've got to count the cost for what you want. And then once you're pre-committed to pay it, then you pay it and you build your tower. You build your kingdom. You build your empire. But it's part of plans. Now, plans are sequential. They're sequential protocol inside a thought through, a thought through, uh, wow, 
learn how to spell. Okay, inside of a thought through paradigm. So what you're doing here, and this is very, very key, catch this. Plans mean, okay, if you're an invisible empire, I'm going to complete invisible empire. I'm going to set up my high ticket freedom formula. I'm going to start spending $5 a day on Facebook. After a week of that, I'm going to optimize my ads and I'm going to spend $10 a day as I decrease my keywords. Then as I make a sale, I'm going to reinvest 100% of my commission back into my marketing. And then I'm going to do this and I'm going to host, you know, two webinars a week and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this. And it's in a thought through paradigm. Okay. Now those plans, when you go diligent and you fast move upon plans that are thought through, that have some stamina, that are part of building something like an empire or a tower, that's a part of something big that you're working towards, that you've thought through, that leads surely. This is the close. The Bible doesn't give a ton of guarantees. This, this is just about as sure as you're going to get in the scripture on how to become wealthy. This is about as close to the recipe as you're going to get. And it's stamped kind of guaranteed. Raise your hand if you see what I'm saying. This is a guarantee. It's a kind of a scriptural promise that if you put action and fast motion inside well thought through plans that have a multitude of counselors that have experienced people, it will lead surely to abundance. This isn't it'll lead surely to pay your mortgage and make sure there's some food in your fridge. This is abundance. This is when you're able to fly company in. This is when you're able to host feasts that are thousands of dollars. This is when you're able to travel and do all sorts of fun stuff and get great gear. And This is the fullness and the richness of life but it's inside long range plans. Now, here's here's the distinction. And this is where so many people fail so badly online. But to everyone who is hasty comes only to pro poverty. Hasty, remember. Hasty is sporadic decisions. It's like this. Oh, there's that little offer over there. I'm going to run over there and promote that for a week. Oh, look over there. I'm going to run over there and promote that for a week. Oh, look at what's on TV for a week. I'm going to spend a week watching that instead of doing my business. And so what happens is instead of anchoring down into plans, and I would even go deeper, and I would say you've got to get visions behind your plans. So your vision has to be sparkling to, to motivate you to the next level in your life. You, If you want to go to the next level, you will do best if you fuel yourself with sparkling, breathtaking visions of what your future can become. I mean breathtaking. I mean stuff that you only could dream about. I mean stuff literally that you can only dream about happening. Let me give you an example. Shani and I, uh, we love going to Hawaii. We're actually slated to go to Hawaii at the end of this month. Um, saved like four grand with our Renaissance membership. And here's the short story. Um, I always dreamed of taking my kids all over the world. So we took them into the heart of the jungle in Hawaii. I have a friend through my business network that lives inside the guts of the jungle of Hawaii. They're raw vegan. They kind of live half like apes. It's hilarious. I love them. And they guided us through a path with wild horses, through a bam bamboo jungle, into a gigantic waterfall that's totally secluded that only 500 tourists a year go to. So we do this family hike. My video guy captures it. I actually have the video. I'd love to dig it up. I should probably dig it up. Raise your hand if you'd like me to dig that up. I could dig that up and show you guys. But at, but the, at the end of it, at the end of it, um, my camera guy and and my local friend, they took the kids back and Shani and I had romantic interlude, we'll call it, under this majestic, wild, huge waterfall as tall as this Empire State Building. We were all by ourselves in the middle of the Hawaiian jungles. Now, all of that, that, oh my gosh, that week 
That week, I made about $150,000 because it was in the middle of a launch. And so it wasn't that day, but it was like the following day, we started launching a product. I made $70,000 that day cash into my account. With That was profit. And we spent this magical week in Hawaii with the kids doing all these fun adventures. And money is just blizzarding into my account. Now, here's what I'm saying. I saw these kind of things in my visions. I had visions for that. I had visions to move my family to the sun, but to still stay family connected back in North Dakota. I'm in North Dakota right now. I had vision for this. So you've got to, in my opinion, to move me, to move me to action, it took sparkling, vivid, vivid, sharp, breathtaking vision for what I wanted to have happen in our lives. And then that was so inspiring that it caused me to create plans. And then I'm able to diligently, tirelessly work those plans. Okay, I'm working those plans. Hasty people, they will put up Facebook ad and don't, do not beat yourself up if this is you. Don't worry about it. Put up a Facebook ad for three days. Eh, doesn't work out too well. So you quit. You go to one conference. You get around it. You get pumped up. You meet people that are making, you meet all sorts of people making six figures, seven figures, some eight figures. You're pumped up. You believe in, you believe again. Your, your vibration ramps up. You've got these snapshots of hope of what your future can become. And so what you do is you come home and you really email your list a nice video recap of the week and you're pumped. And then that's it. It's a hasty move. Two weeks later, when you really decide to get after it, you invite your list to a webinar. But no one really shows up because you're barely engaged. So then you get motivated again and then you put, okay, do you see, raise your hand if you see what I'm saying. This is the path that is guaranteed poverty. It's the guaranteed poverty path. Disjointed, sporadic, uncommitted moves. That's what these moves are here. The plans of the diligent are also fast moves. They're just fast moves inside plans that are fueling visions that are breathtaking. And that leads surely. Again, this is a guarantee. It leads surely to abundance. And inside abundance, you'll find your blood pressure drop a little bit. Inside abundance, you'll find you breathe a little better. Inside abundance, you'll find it's vacations are better because you got a little extra coin. Inside abundance, Christmas is a lot more exciting looking forward to. Inside abundance, you're wearing better clothes. You're driving better cars. You've got a housekeeper. Screw the house. Screw getting a new house. I think if half of you just got housekeepers and they came through every week or twice a week and spit shined your house, that would be the equivalent emotionally of getting a new house for some of you. You really don't need the new house. You need to declutter. You need to start from scratch. You need to do an atomic bomb on the clutter and the procrastination in the garage and under the bed and in the closet. And you need to do an absolute repentance. Get that all in order and you're going to see your creativity spike. You're going to see your hope lift. You're going to see your mojo up and you're going to create some visions and plans that lead surely to abundance. I believe that for you. I said 34 minutes or I said 30 minutes. We're at 34 minutes. I was four minutes late, so now we're at 30. All that said, thank you guys for being here uh, today. This is a lot of fun for me. And look at, oh, you guys got tons of notes here. I appreciate it. 
uh, money is blizzarding into my account. So that's a new confession. The jungle video. I'll come up with that. I'll dig up that jungle video for sure. Um, and then also, I'm going to drop in the... Um, oh, Jaden's even got the Hawaii video for me. Jaden, I don't know how to load that though. Hang on. Wait for one second here. Okay, everybody's free to go. I'm going to pull up the Hawaii video and send the link in here. And then I've got one other thing I want to link in here real quick. Um, so let me see if I can get this rolling. Preferences. Wait for it. Wait for it. Working on it. I'm working on it here, everybody. Hang on. Hey, great crowd today. I got thank you guys for being with me today. Um, so this one, here's here's the Hawaii link. We'll just watch it. It's 70 seconds. Raise your hand if you want to watch it real quick. It's 70 seconds. But this is what I was talking about: a breathtaking vision. And by the way, this condo is absolutely epic. Flew in my video guy for this week. I entered into the Iron Man, which I absolutely did not uh, pass and I did not complete the Iron Man. I got uh, booted out of the swim because that's a long story. But all that said, it was a dream week fulfilled. So here's the short story on Hawaii. This should be about 70 seconds, I hope. Uh, this is okay, this is my first uh, paddle boarding has taken over surfing for popularity out here, so we're gonna see how it goes. Hawaii's best known for their helicopter tour. This is pretty much the uh, island playground right here, you got rope swingers. Alright. All right, so what's funny is this isn't the actual Hawaii video. This is a different Hawaii video. But uh, I have so many Hawaii videos that what's the difference? So all that said, that one's not it. But let me get this one, Jaden webinar link. All right, so this webinar, I'll try to find that other Hawaii video. Uh, Jaden, I have a ton of them, so don't, don't feel bad. But I'm sending this in the... Uh, to the chat i think i sent it to all but here's a short story last night speaking of plans rob thomas has done eight thousand dollars in the last two weeks with our invisible empire and we have a very distinct plan that we teach people on how to get started how to get set up how to place their first facebook ads and how to start making money and this particular interview is in your little uh, link there. And it's an interview with uh, Stapleton and Landon interviewing Rob on how he's done eight grand. Now, again, this is his first year online. He's brand new and he's really digging into the culture. So this can be a type of story I'd like to create. Uh, amongst some of you as well. So feel free to watch that and you can get back to us through all sorts of links and channels and stuff like that. But all that said, Mark Overson signing off. Thank you for all these kind words, all this feedback. Greatly appreciate it. Candace says she's ready to pop. Jean says so much of this is self-fulfilling prophecy. It really is. If you confess big things for yourself, you just put yourself in that kind of situation. Um, people are on the edge of their... They're on the edge of a breakthrough with more and more of these trainings. Um, I love it. You guys are great. Super engaged. All right. That's it. Mark Overson signing off. See you next week. Much love.